All right. All righty. So welcome to another Tech Tuesday, everyone. It's nice to see you guys. Uh, today, I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about KV Core. Surprise, surprise. Um, I would like to touch on importing your contacts into the uh, CRM software because without any contacts, you're not, you won't be able to do anything. You're, it's not going to serve its purpose. And um, I feel like importing your contacts can be a little bit confusing, tricky, and, and it's easy to get lost in the process. And you want to make sure you do it the right way. Um, I've learned the hard way. I've actually imported everything the wrong way. So I had to delete everything and redo it. So I'll be sharing um, how I went about importing my contacts and what worked for me. So I want to touch on that. And also, I want to talk about uh, your KV Core website because it's a very important component of KV Core. Okay, and uh, I also want to share that if you have not set up your KV Core just yet, I recommend you get started on that process because for some people, it's been taking a long time. Me personally, when I set up my KV Core, I got an email uh, two to three hours after telling me that I was all good to go. Uh, but for some people, it could go for more than a week, maybe up to 10 days, I've heard. So if you're interested in leveraging the software, I would go ahead and get that process started as fast as possible. Okay, so we'll be talking about importing contacts and I'll also wanna do a, an overview of um, setting up your KV Core website to your liking, how to customize everything, the fonts, uh, how what all the buttons mean and, and get you started on that. Because again, it's very important because potential leads will go on that uh, website, fill in their information, and you want it to be um, all nice and clean and, and set up to your liking. And again, interrupt me at any moment if you have any questions. If I don't know the answer to it, I'll note it down and make sure to um, communicate that to you or maybe in a, a, the next meeting. Okay, and another quick thing before we get started, I we are recording these meetings and oh, let me let people in the room here. So we're recording these meetings and I went ahead and created a, um, a channel where you guys can refer to all of these past meetings. You can go ahead and watch uh, the whole live stream of the Tech Tuesday. This is the previous one we did right here. And I've also went ahead and clipped every single section, every topic I talked about. And if you want to revisit a particular uh, thing I said, a particular section. I'm so sorry, I didn't hear that. Did you have a question? I'm not sure who that was. Continue. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, so you, you have this library to um visit and 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 access this to watch all of the previous talks we had this meeting also will be on there uh, right after uh we finish and i will post that and also clip everything i'll post the links to all of these in the chat um right now and also at the end okay and if you don't get a chance to get all these links please reach out to me or frank and we will get that to you all righty. Okay, time to interrupt before you get started. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, dear. Okay, I remember last week you said um, you sent out a bunch of emails. Sure. I just want to know, did you send out those emails through KV Core? I sure did, yes. I sure did. So I sent, uh, I think, about 5,000 emails. And as you can see, all of the stops I got right here, <laughs> These are all the people who opted out uh, via text and also email. So yes, I did use KV Core. So the people that said stop, mm -hmm. does KV Core automatically pick that up and do, take that number out or do something with it? Or do you have to do it manually? 
No. So when you use KV core, so the people that say stop here, this particular uh, that has to do with text messaging because you can also automate text messaging. Mm -hmm. But for emails, they also get an unsubscribe button that they can click on that KV core automatically puts on there for you. So you don't have to remember to do all that. And when they click on those buttons or when they reply stop to the text messages, KV core will automatically remove those from the system and it will automatically replace the number for a, you know, their second line because it's probably not them. Uh, not all the contacts will be accurate depending on how you import them. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. It's a, it's a really smart software and it's really cool that it does that for you. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have a question before we get started? Awesome. Awesome. All right. So in order to import your contacts into KV Core, uh, once you're logged in, you're going to scroll to lead engine right here on the left-hand side. And if you don't see this section, you can press the uh, little menu icon here with the three bars that will expand the menu right here. And then you can click on lead engine. Okay. And once you get onto this page, what you want to do is bulk import. Okay. So this is how you're going to upload all of your contacts into KV Core. There's multiple ways to add contacts. You could do them one by one manually. You can collect contacts through people that visit your website and fill out the, their information, name, email, and phone number. KV Core will automatically register those people. But for most people getting started uh, with KV Core, you probably already have contacts on your phone. Maybe you're using a um, cold calling software that has you know, uh, expired list and, and whatnot for sale by owner list. And you would like to import all those here. This is the way you would do that. So I'm sure 90% of people would bulk import what they already have. And then maybe later down the line, you can add the rest individually or automatically manually, however you choose. There's two ways to go ahead and import those contacts into KV Core, but each of these, uh, no matter which way you choose, you have to provide KV Core with the file, uh, including those numbers. So once you have that file, you can either let KV Core, the KV Core team handle that. Based on that file, they will plug everything in for you and set it up, or you can do it yourself. I recommend that you do it yourself because uh, initially I let KV Core handle it and they put all the wrong things in the wrong places and I had to delete everything and figure it out by myself. It was scary at first, but it's actually not that hard. Uh, so we're going to get started right here and we're going to do it ourselves. So before we can upload our contacts KV Core, like I said, you need a, 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 a an Excel spreadsheet uh, with all of those contacts. And say you have your contacts on your phone, for example, you want to export those as a, a second here, I'm going to turn this TV off. You want to export your contacts to that CSV file. And you can do that in a multitude of ways. If everything is on your phone, there are plenty of apps out there that you can uh, look for. Just you could put, if you have an iPhone, I use this app called, uh, let's see what it's called. And I will put all of this stuff in the chat also, and maybe on the uh, YouTube description if you decide to to watch that video afterwards. Uh, if you have an Apple device, it's called MC Backup, okay? That's the name of the app. So that app is going to grab all of the contacts in your phone and it will email you the file in a CSV format, ready for you to edit and then plug into KV Core. Uh, let's see, if you have- Is it Android compatible? Yeah, I, I use, only Apple devices, I'm sure most apps that are on, <laughs> most, <laughs> most apps that are on Apple devices are also on the Google Play Store. So I have no doubt that this app is also on the Google Play Store. If not, there's one similar to it. 
uh, you just got to type in um, CSV exports or contacts export. They will always, 99% um, of the time, it will export in the file, uh, in the CSV file or an Excel spreadsheet, and either one will work. Okay, so there's multiple ways you can do this, but I will, I use the iOS software and that's the app, you know, I, I use to, to do that. So if you have an iPhone, I'll send this app to you. Uh, if you have a, a Android device, I'm so sorry, I, I can't, uh, <laughs> can't help you. but I'm sure it's on there. I'll try to find that resource for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, so if you have everything on your phone, that's one way to do it. If you have your contacts list, maybe on a, a dialer software, cold calling software, they always have a way to export that data. I use Mojo Dialer. I don't know if anyone cold calls using that software, um, but I can also share with you how I went ahead and exported those contacts. Uh, if you, you would. Say Mojo, Mojo, M O J O? Mojo Dialer, yeah. Ah, mm -hmm. thank you. It's, yeah, for sure. It's a, it's a really cool software that gives you a lot of data and you can export that too. So once you go ahead and export that data, it'll give you a file. Let me go ahead and find my file right here. So most of the software, the, the contacts exporting software will email you that file or maybe directly save it onto your device, depending on how you do it. I have exported everything that's on my phone using that app I talked about, and it sent me this file via email. And if I open this up, you'll see it has all of the contacts within my phone. It'll make this nice table for you. And um, yeah, it's pretty easy and straightforward. Okay, I'll record a short video for all you iPhone users, and I'll find one also for the Google uh, phone users or Androids. And uh, yeah, so once you have this file right here, you are 50% uh, of the way there. Now, let's go back to KV Core. So once you get to the lead engine, uh, you want to scroll down to bulk import again. And we want to not get started just yet. We want to click here to learn more about importing our leads. And the reason why we do that is because KV Core has a template um, spreadsheet with all the column names it recognizes. Because you can't just throw anything in the software, it will not know what the column names are. So if your column name is, you know, phone number one, KV Core won't recognize it unless it's like mobile underscore one. So you have to change it to the language that KV Core understands so that it can save that data in the correct um, field, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on here. So depending on where you are, I'm sure most of us are in the, hopefully in the US, <laughs> we're gonna click on the first link here, KV Core Lead Import Template. Okay, if I click on this, it'll open a Google Drive page with uh, all of this neat information and all this cool info. But first thing you wanna do is come down right here and you want to go to commonly used fields. So I'm going to click right there. And this right here is an example of how you need to classify each column so that KV Core can import those properly and know exactly what field is what. Okay. So as you can see, uh, if you want your first name to be classified as the first name, it, the column needs to be called first underscore name and so on and so forth. Okay, so if we go back to my spreadsheet right here, uh, let me see if I can find it again. Mm -hmm. There it is. So because mine is not named exactly like that, first name underscore, uh, you know, last name underscore or whatever it was, KV Core is not going to know that uh, this is the contact's first name. So what we want to do is go ahead and modify all of those fields to match what KV Core wants. So if I'm just gonna do this along with you guys. So we're gonna do first underscore name, that's done. 
and then there's no middle name column. So I'm going to actually delete that. Every single section that is on your spreadsheet, the initial one that you get, if KV Core does not have that field, you are good to go ahead and delete that because KV Core won't know what it is. Okay, you can also leave those in. KV Core will save that information as notes. Okay, so if you don't care about the info, you can delete the column. But if KV Core doesn't know what it is, it will save it as a note. Okay, and it's a little tedious to go through all the notes and fill all that stuff in. So do as you please with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of the columns that I don't need. I don't have anyone's middle name probably. So I'm gonna delete that. Uh, there we go. Organization, I'm gonna delete that. The delete, boom. Department, I don't need. Title, we don't need. Nickname, we don't need. I'll leave birthday because KV Core has a birthday section. Anniversary, I believe KV Core has one, but I don't have anyone's anniversary. So I'm gonna delete that too. Mobile, obviously very important. We need their phone numbers. iPhone is not a field. I'll delete work, home, main, and get rid of all these. Boom. All right, and then prefix, we don't need that. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this stuff because KV Core will not know what it is. So I'm left with first name, last name, suffix, I don't need either, let's get rid of that. And then birthday, their phone number and their email. So I'm gonna refer to the template. Uh, I think last name was last underscore name. And let's go back here. So spouse, if you have that, you can create that column and fill that in. Hashtags, um, if you're new to KV Core, uh, you hash, I made a video on hashtags. You can refer to the YouTube channel to see what hashtags are. It's a really cool way to organize your contacts. Um, so if you wanna categorize certain people under say cash buyers or first time home buyers, you can have a column there and have all those uh, keywords for them there. So KV Core knows to categorize them as such. And then we have the email fields. Uh, KV Core wants us to just type the word email. So I'm gonna change this. I don't know why it says home, uh, but to email. So now KV Core will know that this column right here is the respective emails for all these contacts. Uh, let's see. Now I need the cell phone field. So cell phone one is the primary phone number. If you have this named as anything else, uh, let's say cell phone two, KV Core will actually think that the contact does not have a primary number to call or text. So make sure that all of the phone numbers, you have something under cell phone one. Otherwise you'll have to go through each of them and actually delete cell phone two and then populate that back into cell phone one, if that makes sense. So always have something under cell phone one. So I'm gonna copy this if I can. Let's see. I'm actually gonna copy this so I can um, edit this stuff. There we go. So we're gonna find cell phone one. I'm gonna copy this and then we're gonna paste it under mobile. So now KV Core will know all of this, uh, this column right here is the primary cell phone. And uh, yeah, let's see, I also had birthdays. So the birthday column, uh, this is the format KV Core wants. So I'm gonna go back to mine and I think this is the yeah, so make sure all of your birthdays, if you have that on your original document, um, KV Core wants a slash in between uh, the dates. And this person was definitely not born in 1604. <laughs> uh, this is actually my brother. So he's 01, 27, 20, uh, 2000. So make sure the birthdays, uh, the birthday field has the birthdays uh, in this format, okay, with the slash, just like KV Core wants it right here. 
And if you have any of these columns or you would like to manually add these for each of your contacts, you can go ahead and create new uh, columns and fill that information in with the appropriate name, okay? So depending on where you get your contacts from, you might have more fields than me. Because this is all from my phone, I just have their basic info, maybe their email, but mostly their phone number. Okay, so I'm going to delete this field because I don't have anything to put there. All right, so we have all of the columns properly named. We got rid of everything that we don't need to import. Uh, so now I'm going to save this file. And depending on if you use a Mac or a Windows computer, uh, you just want to go to the file. I think it's file everywhere. And then you want to export to, and this is very important. KV Core can uh, wants you to upload a CSV file. So once you're done, you want to save it as a CSV file. Okay. Um, I'm not going to include the table name and all of this stuff is good. So I'm just going to save, press next and put it on my computer. So let's go ahead and upload that real quick. Mm -hmm. I'm going to save it here. Yeah. That's it. Contacts. CSV. And I'm going to press dot CSV. Boom. So now that's exported. I'm going to close this. And now we have that right here. Okay. This is the file that we're going to upload to KV Core so that it we can get started um, with importing our contacts. So this is step one, okay? So I'm gonna go back to KV Core. We're gonna close this. We don't need it anymore. Close that, close this tab. So now we're ready to get started after you, you go ahead and do that. All right, so it'll bring you to this page right here where you can upload that document. So I'm gonna find that right here. We're gonna drag it to my desktop. That's not gonna work. Just gonna browse and find it. All right, so once I have that information, I'm gonna upload it and there it is. KV Core will not show this if you did something incorrectly. If the file size is too big, you might wanna create multiple uh, different files. I think, um, once you go above 3,000, 4,000, it might be too big. So you want to break, you want to maybe create two separate files if you have a lot of contacts to import at once. Because KV Core has a file size limit. Okay, but um, looks like 1,700, 1,800 was fine. Uh, so yeah, it's going to show you a preview of all of the contacts with the fields. Okay, so I'm going to press next. And then there you go. So because KV Core recognizes all of the column names, all of the fields have been matched. So those were first name, last name, birthday. I didn't have a title column, so nothing's gonna be here. The email, it found that because we have that in. The, my contacts did not have a secondary email, so that's blank, et cetera, et cetera. So if KV Core doesn't recognize something, you can manually choose the column within your CSV file under this uh, page right here. So say I had a title column, but it was not called title. I can go ahead and click on you know this field right here and find whatever the title section should be, if that makes sense. If I had it called you know suffix maybe, I can scroll through here, click suffix because suffix to me means title and uh, so on and so forth. So once all of this is looking good, uh, you want to go ahead and press next to move on to the next step. All right. And there you go. This is the confirmation page. KV Core will give you a breakdown of everything you're importing. It will also show you which contacts will not be imported. And that can be due to the contact not having an email and a number, or maybe you have that contact twice. So it's smart enough to know to you know, not import things that do not need to be imported. So you can go ahead and still import those if you want, and you can view which ones those are. 
as you can see, I have a lot of duplicate emails and invalid data. So I'm going to trust KV Core that those contacts don't need to be imported. And that's that. So this is how you import your contacts. So if, you, if we look at the um, bottom section right here, you can actually uh, add a hashtag to all of these contacts you're importing. So that way you know where they came from. So let's say these contacts came from the Mojo Dialer software I use. And I wanted to launch a specific campaign for that group of people, uh, the, the, those specific groups of people. I could add a hashtag called, you know, Mojo Dialer. So that way, later down the line, if I want to find all of these people I just imported, I can just search with that hashtag. So that's really cool that you can do that. Uh, you can automatically assign a campaign to them also. All of the data I have from KV Core is actually an expired data. So I can automatically assign this campaign to them upon the completion of you know, their, their importation, if you will, English. <laughs> so yeah, you can go ahead and do all that there. And uh, this section right here is alerts. You can set them up with property, you know, generic alerts for their area or an area of your choosing. That can be a market report. It can be, you know, a landing page for them to um, go ahead and, and put their home address so that they can get an estimate on their home value. So you can play around with the search alerts too. Okay, so once you're done with all that and you have all of the contacts you want to import and everything looks good, you want to go ahead and press finish. Okay, I'm not going to press finish because I already have all these contacts there and I don't want them twice. But once you click finish, uh, it will take you back to the smart CRM and they will populate right here. Depending on how much you do, it might take a while for them to pop up. I imported about 6,000 contacts at once and it took about 30 minutes to 45 minutes for all of them to appear. Uh, so don't be scared if they don't populate right away. Don't do it again because then you'll have double. Okay, so that is how you go ahead and import your contacts. Uh, and very quickly, before I finish with this section, I'm going to go back to the bulk import page. So we just did the do-it-yourself method. So if you wanted to let KV Core handle it for any reason, if you're still not comfortable doing what we just did, you can just submit the file, but this would be the edited file. So you still have to edit your own CSV file match it with all of the column names KV Core wants. And once you have that file, you would go ahead and click Submit File and upload that uh, right here. It'll take you to this page. Um, obviously, if you don't accept their terms, I don't think they will help you. So go ahead and accept that and fill in all the information. And then you want to choose your file. Go ahead and upload that. Answer all of these questions because based on what you answer here, this is how the KV Core team will classify your contacts or you know what to put in what field. So you're providing them with all of that information on here. And if you have extra comments, you can type that. You say, hey, please don't import the specific column or please add this section to the notes. Sky's the limit. And as you can see, it, might, it may take up to three business days for uh, their team to do that for you, but you'll get an email afterwards. Okay, so initially when I did this, it also took about, I want to say five, six hours. I got an email pretty soon, but they did not do it how I wanted it. So I had to redo it. So those are the two ways you can import a lot of contacts at once. Okay. All righty. So that's that section. Does anyone have a question about what we just did? Uh, anything at all? Drop things in the chat, interrupt me at any moment. Was that super easy? All righty. So, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Easy. Question? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't super easy. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Have you, did you guys already import your contacts into KV Core or is this a first for most of you guys? 
will be the first for me. And I, I first have to figure out how to see the Excel sheet the way you do. For sure. Yeah. So the step that I didn't show is actually getting your contacts into, you know, getting that initial file. But based on how you're importing your data, it's going to look different for, for you. But I'm going to find generic ways, generic methods like importing from your contacts or, uh, you know, on an iOS device and on an Android device. If you're getting your contacts from elsewhere, you would have to reach out to that team to see how you can export those into the file format that you need, which is a CSV. Um, but there's multiple ways to go about it. But these are the basic ways you can get at least your phone contacts on there. Okay. So yeah, that's that. Any other comments, questions before we move on? All right, no problem. So now that we know how to import our contacts by ourselves, or at least uh, hand the baton to the KV Core team, uh, we're gonna talk about our KV Core website. Okay, so if you guys have access to KV Core, it also comes with a free website. You do not have to pay for that. You're able to add uh, cool bells and whistles to your website, but I think the features that it comes with are pretty expensive already. And uh, But if you're an expert and you want more out of it, you always have paid um, features you can add, okay? So we're gonna go into the web and IDX section. And I think a while ago, someone asked me what IDX meant. I actually went ahead and found out what it was. And then I forgot again what IDX stands for. <laughs> So let's actually find out together because I, I feel like uh, I should have remembered that for you guys. IDX uh, definition. It was a, a weird, weird word there. It just has to do with your, um, with websites, internet data exchange. So it looks like that's what it means. But as far as KV Core goes, uh, this section just refers to anything uh, with your website, uh, whether it be the widgets, the things you embed in it, the blogs you post, site content, all of that cool stuff. So just website overall. So once you get to the web and IDX section right here, this, everything that you see here has to do with the customization of your uh, KV Core website. And your KV Core website will actually be, if you're with EXP, it should be your first name, last name, dot realty.com and if you want to confirm that you can go on the top right of your kv core uh, dashboard or actually wherever you are within kv core you can press on your name and it'll have your website here next to the little uh, world icon so first name last name dot exp realty.com okay and if you click on it it'll actually take you there so that you can see what it looks like so this is uh, my website and I've actually customized this. It, they don't come like this. I chose these colors, uh, replaced some of the text, changed this template. I thought it looked pretty cool. I like this uh, dark blue color. So yeah, this is me. And we've also gone through the My Profile section of KV Core because a lot of the information you will see on your webpage will be pulled from the my profile section okay i'm not gonna go through this again i have a video of this on that youtube channel i showed you guys but um, make sure all of the correct information is uh, on here and if there are things that are not filled out make sure they are so that they can be displayed on your web page and uh, people who go on there will be able to see everything you have to offer all of your social media sites your number email etc Okay, so make sure your about me is filled out, signature, and the whole nine yards. All right, so let's go back here. Okay, so we're going to go through everything you see on here. Uh, once you click on this, this is what you will see. Uh, I would disregard this first column right here. If you have a WordPress website, you can add some of the features from there. I don't have one, so I don't know for sure what you're able to import or plug in. 
but um on here the second column right here will show what photo will show on your website and again this photo is uploaded on the my profile section okay so i have a a somewhat decent photo of myself here it'll show your name phone number your email and then if we scroll down here this is where you can add those extra bells and whist whistles and features to kv4 i've clicked through all of these already you got to pay for all of these guys uh, so if you're just getting started i wouldn't tamper with this don't spend any money before you're already comfortable with the, the base functionalities okay all right and then on this section right here on the right side you have the template so if i go ahead and uh, look under here my current template is the hero template i'll show you guys where to change that really quickly and then the theme that nice uh, navy blue color i was showing you that's my current theme so that's what that is and then once we click on here it'll take you to your website where you can actually edit certain things on there so let's actually do that really quickly so if you click on that It'll bring you to your website and it'll show you this um, text editor field right here. There's not much you can really customize through the website editor. So it's basically gonna be anything below this bar because no matter what you do, you're gonna have this uh, bar right here under the search field. You have your number, uh, uh, website, no, uh, your email and then your license number words and under here so from under here all the way to our actually no all the way to this section right here it's only going to let you edit these texts right here so uh, such as this i'm going to leave it as is you can edit this text you can edit the buttons you know all of those things i would leave as is because kv course already i mean it's it already looks fine the way it is for me so i'm not going to change any of the, that text but that's what the website editor tool is for for you to edit uh, these section names right here it's not going to let you edit you know the generic field fields like our listings i can't do anything here but that's just going to take me to that section and pretty much anything below that you won't be able to edit and Wait, the, did you put those different categories in? Because I don't have those. Uh, which category? Like, the, what's my homework, latest blog post? Did you add that? I sure did. So I oh. did add that. Yeah, and I'll show you how to how I did that too. But okay. you're not able to edit those with the editor either. So it's just going to be the generic sections. I think everyone has these. Uh, what's my, well, at least from here. Your search starts here, instant listing alerts. I think everyone has those, but anything nope. below that. Oh, you don't have those either. Interesting. Nope. Okay. So it may just come with my particular template. So, um, but yeah, definitely what's under here, I added those manually. And I've actually uh, made a blog post today, which is pretty cool. So that's, that's that. I'm going to go back. And uh, the rest of the sections you see down here, you can tweak those within the KV4 settings on the back end itself. And uh, if we scroll down a little more, the about section is under the my profile section. So I went ahead and filled that out and that's uh, going to appear here. It'll show my latest blog post, the one I just showed you guys. I just posted it today and yeah areas you cover you can also tweak this okay so when anyone comes on your website it'll show what areas uh you cover and all of this is standard if you scroll down your website will already, will already have all this info on there for you okay and also the chat me section here i can't remember if that comes pre well pre-set up for you i think i added that myself but we'll I'll walk you guys through all of the settings and we might see if it was after all or not. So that's the site editor button. That's what that does. I'm gonna close this, close this, and then now we're back. So website content, this section right here. So you can go ahead and add testimonials to your website. Uh, I did not put anything in just yet. And I know that you can import those 
from Zillow if you have Zillow reviews. So you could go ahead and click here and then provide your email and screen name for that. I don't have a Zillow account, so I don't have this information. I'm gonna cancel. Or if you have testimonials written down already from other sources, you can go ahead and press the green button right here and actually add it yourself, okay? It was very tempting to write something here, <laughs> but uh, I did not because I want them to be authentic um, reviews. So, but you can go ahead and do that manually right here. So let's go back here, service areas. So right here, I was talking, I, I can't remember, but someone was asking me if you are able to only show the areas you work in and you can actually populate that right here under the website content field. If I press view and edit, it will take me to this page where I can add all of the areas I work in, okay? And under this field where it says add right here, you could type anything, uh, Los Angeles, and then it'll sc scroll through all of the Los Angeles areas, Los Angeles City, Southwest LA, et cetera, et cetera. Or what you can do is if you click on this button right here, uh, I'll have to put all this again, but for the sake of this Tech Tuesday, I'm gonna remove everything I have on here. And by default, you're going to have add all cities in MLS. So KV Course also tied to your MLS and you can provide your MLS information within the My Profile section. Okay, so once you do that, it'll have that information and it can actually pull in all of the cities that are within your MLS subscription and it'll automatically populate all of that on here for you once you click on add all cities and then on your website where that section with all the different cities i service it will automatically fill that in for you but uh it's quite a lot um so whichever one you prefer you can have that there uh, let's go back again mm -hmm. custom pages so if you would like other pages on your website uh, you can go ahead and create that on here you can create a new page you can write some content, the title of the page, et cetera. I have a personal website where I like to post um, extra info or other types of content. So I didn't play around with this field, but you have that available to you if you want to um, showcase something else that you do or, or display some information on your website that uh, you otherwise would not be able to on the generic page it comes with. So you could do that there. Let's go back once more. Mm -hmm. And again, please interrupt me at any moment with any questions, okay? Uh, I'm looking at the chat every five minutes. All right, so this is the website content um, field, and then we have the blog posts field. So you can view all of your posts when you click on the blue button, but if you have a new post you wanna do, you can add that here, put a title, and then write, the article, and you can even set it to publish the content at a time of your choosing, which is pretty nice. So you can have scheduled posts automatically uh, set up for you. Um, I, I do a lot of uh, video content on personal finance and real estate. And the way I do those is by scripting my videos. So when I make my script, I turn it into a blog post and then I actually you know, read my script in my videos sometimes. Sometimes I just talk, but that's a cool way for me to always have something to post on here. Say you want a, a good example of a nice post would be, you know, the best restaurants in Torrance. And then you can have a cool article on that. And anyone who looks for, you know, best restaurants in Torrance might come across your blog article. And then if they click through your website and they read all that stuff and they want to know more, that's an extra content you have, an extra contact you will have um, in your database because KV Core will prompt them with, hey, sign up here for more blog posts from me, put your email, phone number, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can always get back to them and have them be a potential lead later down the line if they want to move to Torrance or, or anywhere else. So that's the power of blogs right there. 
I feel like you have to be pretty consistent with those. It's going to take a lot of time and a lot of consistency to build a nice portfolio of blogs. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have some, but it's not the end of the world if you don't have any either. Okay. And lastly, we have embeds here. This is uh, one of the more advanced features, and you probably won't need this if you don't have a personal website outside of the KV Core website itself. So say, uh, you're on my website. I'll show you. Oops, let's go back. So say you're on your website or any other domain name you have. I'll show you what the embed kind of does if I can. Uh, .com. So if you go on a separate page or another website you have, or maybe another platform, you can actually, let's go to the embed. I'm going to click on add embeds. So you have a bunch of things you can embed on your website. So if I go ahead and click on property search right here, you can copy these codes. And what this is, is a property search, uh, uh, property search field. So I can copy this whole thing right here with this code onto my website. And I can have a separate section, say, wherever I want, because the sky's the limit if you have your own website. You can have a different section on your website where I can plug this into my website. So anyone who goes on my personal website will have the ability to look for properties as well. So I'm leveraging the power of KV Core uh, with my other social media platforms and, and other places. So if they were to go to, on my website, look for a location, say Los Angeles, et cetera, and then they click on the search results, it will actually take them back to my KV Core website. So it all kind of works as this cool ecosystem where everything's tied together. And I think that's pretty cool. But again, this is one of the more advanced features. Um, yeah, but I just wanted to show you guys what that looks like. And these two sections here, you have two different kinds. You have a smaller property search small, they call it property search basic. And each of these has their own code. Okay. And you have other things you can plug into your website, such as this type of search bar right here, or, or a seller val valuation um, web ad uh, search address bar. So I can also put this search field on my website. And once they put their address, they'll get taken to my website where they can see an estimate of their home. Uh, value so that's embed for you for anyone who has another website all right oh uh something else real quick i forgot this first section qr codes i think qr codes are amazing i use them for a lot of different things uh if you want someone to go on your website and you don't want to tell them the link but you have a qr code you can show them you can uh, save you can screenshot this and and you know show people once they scan it with their smartphones they'll get taken to your website and if you have a particular listing you want to share with people say you have a um i don't know you're doing an open house but the house is closed and it's late at night but people want to see more information about the property maybe you could have a sticker with uh the QR code for the respective uh, the, the place you're you're doing an open house at and you can type in the MLS ID right here and it will actually generate a QR code for you that will land anyone in the um, property details for that property if that makes sense so QR codes are awesome and really clean nice way to to have people visit the places you want them to visit so that's the QR code section all right Wait, is that the same qr do you have a qr code on your business card so i i do have one on my business card i actually uh created that myself on another software but kv core won't let you do that so that was something separate i did uh, so using another your method. qr code on your business card will that take you to your kv core website or to your personal one so the qr code i have on there actually saves my contact information to your phone okay it doesn't okay, take me yes. thank you to my site yeah so oh, okay. it automatically fills everything in so it's if i, I wouldn't want to give my 
email to someone and they don't spell it properly or maybe my my website yeah so it'll automatically get saved to their phone for them to tap on you know whenever they decide to hop on there so i think i thought that was pretty cool and, and that's where it takes you okay thank you mm -hmm. yeah for sure if you guys are interested in knowing how to do that i can make a short video on that too and drop it on our uh, youtube channel for you to to refer to later but i think it's pretty awesome please do sounds good all right uh, so that's this whole section the website manager section right here does anyone have any questions before i move on to the other sections looking good experts in my website and idx i still don't understand what idx does i mean i know what you said it, it stands <laughs> for but what does it do but that's okay keep going <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's just a name for this section honestly i i get confused with these uh acronyms but it just has to do with idx probably has to do with the customization of all these features on your website most likely okay all right so yeah this is a basic overview of you know surface level things on your website you want to tweak and edit and maybe embed blogs widgets etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, now i want to take you guys to the website settings okay so once we click here uh let's see i don't know if you guys saw where i clicked there at the top right section right here you can click on manage my website settings okay if i click on that it'll take me to this page where i can customize my website uh, on a deeper level okay so my template right here is called hero you have different templates you can choose from this is all aesthetics by the way uh, it does I wish it showed you a preview uh, but I currently have the hero template and if you scroll down right here under the home page content options this is where our websites might differ so if you see here I think most people have the modern uh, as the basic uh, template for their website I changed mine to the modern side by side so that's why my website looks like this and uh, yeah I do notice that there are more fields under the side by side option than the basic one I'm pretty sure this is the basic one so that's why I have certain fields that maybe you guys don't but you can go ahead and choose the one you prefer I thought side by side looked pretty cool so I chose that and you could do so within this little drop down right here okay so once you choose your um, template uh, you can you have more options here also to do some crazy stuff I wouldn't tamper with these this is more so for web developers you can add html code for those of you guys who know what that is and actually optimize your website more to your liking and, and, and edit things so go ahead and choose a nice template and then if you scroll down you have uh, the option to choose multiple colors and I chose that nice navy blue thought it would look pretty cool so you could choose that there and make sure to save whenever you do something press the save button otherwise it will not take effect on your website so always remember that if we scroll down here this is the background section of your website let me actually have my website loaded up so we can see these things so you see this little wallpaper behind my very nice photo right here this is where I chose uh, that so you can choose multiple I think you could choose up to like 30 or something crazy like that I think it'll tell us here uh oh it just says you could select multiple images so when I select more than one image under this section right here it will shuffle through uh those backgrounds okay so I just want that one so I only have that one checked and then once you do have a nice one on there you can click save here and uh, you have plenty of options here too by the way I might actually change to some of these I didn't see these uh if you scroll down here you can actually upload your own image so if you have a cool wallpaper you want to upload you can do so here by clicking on this page and then it'll take you to your computer where you can upload one if you have a secondary logo uh, you can upload that there 
I have not uploaded mine just yet, so I don't know how that will appear on the website, but uh, you have the option to do so by clicking here and uploading that, um, that file. A lot of the fields under here, I would not tweak either. Uh, the way they're set uh, works for me. I don't know what a lot of this stuff means. It's more so advanced things, but um, hide resource page. So there's a resources page on your website. Where is it at? Right here. You can hide this section right here. Um, resources, by the way, is let's click through and find out together. You can have people ask you a question. You have a property search bar on this page, and you also have a QR code to download the EXP Realty app and uh, basic stuff down here. And right here, you can hide other things. WCAG, I don't know what that stands for. Uh, you can hide some buttons, limited listing labels. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I did not tweak with any of these as I don't know what they do, but I don't want to mess anything up. I just know. Um, the basic important things you need to change. So right here, this is an important field, force lead registration. So when people go on your website, uh, I don't know if sometimes when you visit shopping website or you know a lot of websites out there, once you log into them, there's this big pop-up that comes up and it asks you, hey, if you put your email in here, you can save 15% today. So that's what this section is. You can choose what kind of... Um, what's the word, requirements uh, you want to apply to your website. So when people log on, I want them to see the registration, but I don't want to have them to have, I don't want to force them to input that information, uh, if that makes sense, because you can make it so they have to put their email address or phone number to be able to continue to browse through your website. That can scare some people away, so I don't want to require that field. So I have them see the prompt. They can click X if it, they don't want to do that and then keep browsing on my website. You can also have it set to not ask them anything. You can require it after they search through a specific amount of properties on your website. Or you could set it to the normal um, setting. Uh, it'll prompt the registration after they viewed one property. So whether they view something or not, I want them to have that pop-up so they can provide that info, but this is your personal preference, okay? And you can actually change how many properties they have to look at before they get that. So I don't wanna wait, I want your information now, so I have it to the, the minimum amount. Once you have that set how you want it, click save and save that progress. Wait, how did Web you get there again to that page? Right here, to yeah, get here. Yeah, you would go to Web and IDX. There might be multiple ways to get there, but that's how I get there. Web, Web and IDX, and then you want to go to Manage My Website Settings at the top right. Okay, so if you click there, it'll take you here. Okay. Um, I know there's another way to get there, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But Web and IDX, and then Manage My Website Settings. Okay. So let's scroll down here. Where were we? Website title. So this is what people see uh, on the, the website tab. Okay. So if someone was, if you were to change this and people go on your website, they will see the information up here. So you can see Caramel Cocaine Real Estate Agent. That's what should appear here. I have. I don't think I changed mine and saved it. That's why it's not doing it. But you can put that information on here and have that show. So I'm going to save that so it, it takes effect. Uh, homepage meta description. I would not tweak with this. This includes your um, broker address and your brokerage uh, name. So EXP Realty for me. Right, bear with me here. I have some background noise. Awesome, sorry about that. All right, so 
let me push this aside. Any questions so far, by the way? We're almost done with this section. All right. Ask unit, I have no idea what that does. I'm going to be upfront and honest. It was on, so I left that on. Uh, recruit text, I wouldn't tamper with all, any of this stuff. He has information that needs to be there. This is HTML code right here. So I would not tamper with any of that. If you want a custom header, you can populate that right here. Again, I feel like the way it's set up for me is good, so I'm not going to tamper with that. Custom body, footer. Uh, this is the footer of your website. If you go all the way down, that's the information you see right here at the footer. So I think this text right here is this information right here. Okay, so you could change that, but I want to leave it as is. Conversion code, this is some funky advanced text stuff that I don't know anything about. So I'm going to leave that as is, probably for the KV Core team to operate with. Uh, custom chat widget, I don't have one, but if you look down here, you can actually put your Facebook username and that's how I have, let me close this, I keep clicking on it. That's how I have the chat with me section right here, okay? So if you populate this field and save, this chat with me section will populate. And when people go on your website and click on that, they'll get routed over to Facebook where they can log in and actually chat with you um, on Facebook, which is pretty cool. So it's another way for them to get in touch with you if they have more questions. So if you have Facebook, I encourage you to put that in there. Uh, does not hurt really quick. Um, yeah, put that in, save. And additional address, this is if you have your own office or anything other than your brokerage you know, office address. And all of this information right here, this is uh, the broker email, broker number. If you want extra training on editing your website settings, you can watch a tutorial here. And again, this has to do with your testimonials. There's another field where we saw this. You can hide those testimonials if you have any, or you can leave them uh, to be visible. Uh, this is the template section right here again. This, if you have a YouTube video, you can actually have that be your background image right here. Let's let this load. So the image you see in the background with the house right here, you can actually have that be a video. So you would upload that video to YouTube and actually post a portion of the link here. And then you'll have a nice video playing in the background for people to see when they visit your website. So an added touch of you know personality and customization for you there. And then you can tweak uh, whether you want the chat widget to pop up, which is this guy right here. So sky is the limit in this section. You can tweak a lot of different things on your website, okay? Under the custom navigation tab, so you can change what the labels say, labels being uh, search, sell, other resources, you can change those uh, labels there. So if I don't want it to be search, I want it to be look, I can change it to look and then it will ch change right here to you know look, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All of this stuff is buttons on my website listing carousels so this right here the my listing section the adjusted listed section and the just reduced section you can change it to other things okay so if you if we go back to the website so our listings just listed just reduced this is where you would tweak those things so if you want to show open houses you could click that and then save and it'll replace my listings with you know open houses and etc and don't forget to press save. So if you want to track website, I think this is a question I had uh, maybe two Tech Tuesdays ago. You can track people who visit your website, if even if they don't do anything, using the Google Analytics ID. This is a little bit more advanced. You would have to log into Google's website, plug this in there, and then see the website traffic you have, uh, regardless of whether people do something on the site or not. This just checks who is visiting, well, how many people are visiting your website. It's pretty cool. And down here, you have more training you have access to. Uh, this is the agent section. You can hide the your agent section from your listings. Uh, website custom tagline. I don't have a tagline, so I'm not going to put anything there. 
And uh, let's see here. So under the listings tab, this will show all of the tabs, uh, all of the types of properties people will be able to search for on your website. So I have everything checked. So if someone goes on my website and searches for anything, they are able to literally search for anything. So if I check some of these off, they will not populate under the types of listing they're looking for. So I want them to have full control. So I have everything turned on. But if you don't want to deal with certain types of properties, you can uncheck those, save, and then they will not appear under the searchable things, if that makes sense. Okay. And you can also have it be the areas, the counties you cover. Um, you can filter certain areas. Let's see. And yeah, all of this stuff right here, uh, basic information. You can sort them through popularity, the number of beds, et cetera. So this is the in-depth customization page for your uh, website. Okay, and you can skip through these sections by clicking on the left-hand side right there, and it'll take you to the appropriate section. So we already saw all of this, okay? Do we have any questions on this field whatsoever? Was I too fast? Was anything confusing? Any unrelated questions or related questions? Do you use your personal Facebook page or do you have a business page? I have a business page on Facebook and also have a personal page, but I want to use, well, I've, I'm only using my business page. And it's also tied to my Instagram accounts for that respective uh, business page, if that makes sense. So yes, I use the business page in conjunction with Instagram. Okay. Yes. And uh, I actually think that's a better idea because it establishes you as a business. Or if you want, you could just operate as yourself and just post content on your personal Facebook account. It's all up to you. Okay, so that was uh, can pretty, I, yeah. No, sorry. So I, when I was looking at my website, it, it doesn't list any um, service areas. And when I clicked on view edit and then I selected the green add, what does it say, MLS or whatever it said, it, it's still not listing anything. Is there a reason am I missing something? Are you referring to right here, the areas uh, that you cover? Is that Yeah, it? yeah. It says crazy areas like that I don't cover. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, let me go ahead and go there actually and see if we can find out why that yeah, is. Yeah, so mine says zero. Oh yeah, yours does too. That's weird. Yeah, because I just removed mine. So is this where you're what yeah. you're referring to yeah okay so this actually lags behind i noticed so because i just removed all mines it's it's uh actually let's let yeah me and then i everything. did that yeah i did exact that and it still says nothing okay it just takes a while oh, so okay. even if i was to do this and go back here it will not show right away it still says zero it takes a little bit of time like 10 wow. 15 minutes to refresh so you're totally oh. fine oh, okay cool Thanks. yes okay Awesome. Anybody else? Any questions, difficulties? Oh. Um, so all those cities at the bottom of the website, we can delete some of those, right? Yeah. Can we? You, yeah, you can. If you go to, you know, web, web and IDX and go to service areas, you can view and edit them. And then you can manually remove them individually. Or you can, uh, because it takes a little bit of time to refresh, uh, would have showed you otherwise, you can select all of them and delete all of them, or you can manually add the areas you want on there. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank mm -hmm. you. For sure. Cool. Anybody else? Any questions? Let me check the chat really quickly. Nothing. Oh, cool. yeah. So I'm glad I did not uh, go over extremely the one hour mark. Uh, that is the how to import all your contacts manually or maybe let KB Core handle it. And we also learn about 
customizing our website and uh, on a surface level and in-depth background, the text, the template. So make it look as nice as uh, possible. Add some personality to it. And uh, yeah, get ready for people to visit your website and be super amazed. Let me check the chat. Looks like we have a question. Oh, that's Frank. Oh, uh, does any questions before we end this meeting? We talked about a lot of different things. Yeah, maybe, maybe not related. So sure. if you don't have a personal website, yeah. what the... And if you're doing only KV Core, what would be the URL that you will use to share for them to oh. see or look you up? You know, what would you say? I want to make sure I get your question. So, how would you basically share your KV Core website to other people? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Uh huh. Yeah. So, you can just give them the you know web address url so for me that would be caramelcocaine.exprealty.com um that's pretty much how you would attract people there you can also share posts on social media with you know this link that they can click on to visit your website uh but yeah the only way to get them there is through this link somewhere or another okay oh. so you just have to share this with people sounds that's good right. Yeah. Oh, can you can also over... do it through QR codes. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You said you're going to cover that another night. QR codes. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you go over again where you are uploading all of these videos? Yeah, sure. Actually, I did not put that link in the chat. So let's go to YouTube real quick. Oops. right here my channel so this is the link i'm going to copy this put this in the chat actually better yet let me do this link tree this is a really cool website also i, I want to talk about this um, one of these days it's a website that creates one link and then when people click on that one link you can route them to all your other cool stuff. So using this link at the top right here, I'm gonna copy this and paste it in the chat. Once people go to this link, you know, linktree slash Karamoko Homes, they'll be able to click on my website, click on my YouTube channel, the Instagram. And if they click on this, it will actually populate my contact information on their phone automatically. Super cool. So I'm gonna paste this here. And through here, you guys can access the YouTube channel, the Instagram page for maybe short videos with me and Frank, um, and uh, my KD Core website at the top right here. Okay, so if I click on that, I'm going to actually click on the link. This is what you'll see. And you can add as many links as you want. And this is free. If you want to make it look super nice, you can do so. I have one for, you know, Karamoko Homes, which is my real estate business and if we go to my personal one just so you can see what you could do let's edit this ITS and then delete all this so see this is my personal one right here you could customize this stuff this will take you to my personal website this will take you to Karamoko Homes where we just were the YouTube channel this is a different YouTube channel where I talk about personal finance TikTok everything you want on there so you can make it look nice just like this too and people can subscribe to your link tree also so that uh, whatever you add on here they will be notified which is super awesome and the website is linktree.com i believe oh so link tree but the dots before the two e's let me put that in the chat also so that you can check that out if you wish some awesome so yeah you can access the youtube channel that way or you could just go to youtube and actually just type the name of the channel it's called karamoko homes right here so it looks we only have three subscribers so far so let's get to a million guys <laughs> okay so yeah this is where i'm going to be posting this live stream i'll also cut this up and uh, 
make short videos of all of the specific, the little um, topics I, I talked about. Okay, does that answer? Uh, this was all in response to a question just now. <laughs> yes, thank you. Awesome. So yeah, anybody else? Any questions? All looking good, experts. Sounds good. Well, that's everything I have for you guys today. Um, you can also click on these links. It'll have my contact information for you to download onto your phone, Instagram, YouTube page. Uh, everything's going to be on there for you to refer to at any time for free. 